It's really good. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, you know. We did some, we did some up in New Paltz in the old days. Did we do some television up there when Ray Bremser was there and that? I think we did some with Moodnik and... You, you must have. Yeah. Uh, but we get you? We didn't get you? I don't know. I, I, I saw you do a... Uh, I saw a whole night of you interviewing a sexologist one night. Oh, well, that was a, one of those conferences or something like that. But welcome. Welcome very much to Conversations. It's a pleasure to welcome to the program two real honest-to-God poets of the uh, Beatnik stamp, perhaps we could say, in a proud way. And I'd like to introduce them, talk about their... Uh, they show their books, show their works, we talk about their works, their view of the world, and we particularly want to call attention to two things, if we may, before we start. Uh, one is that they're in New York now to be, participate in, the, what's it called, the, uh, the, the festival that you're involved in? You're going to read tonight, uh, I think, I'm here in New York. I'm actually tomorrow. Tomorrow. part of the Howl Festival. The Howl Festival goes for a couple weeks goes down in Thompson one, Square. One week. Yeah. Uh, from Tuesday, last Tuesday to... Uh, Tuesday the 17th to Tuesday the 24th. Right. And then another thing that we're going to want to do is Elliot, if I may, Elliot Katz on my immediate left is the guest editor of a, uh, well, there's a, a literary magazine, a really good one put out with Dan Schott and others like that. It's called Long Shot. And let's people see what this looks like uh, on the shelves and so forth. It's poetry and some commentary, some political it, commentary. It's a very nice, lively mix it of is. poetry, artwork, and articles. It is. Tuli, Tuli. Kupperberg has a couple yeah. of cartoons. And a, a lot of really nice artwork. Leon Golub has uh -huh. a nice piece in there, sadly. And, and a terrific artist, artist just passed away. This is a nice cover, uh, a cover photo by the New York artist Martha Rossler, uh -huh. a photo of uh, people carrying Guernica. Yeah, Guernica, yeah, right. So th this is a book that, as I understand, you can set me straight, and we're going to get around to your background and so forth, but... Uh, this this was a special issue that came out. You were thinking of maybe having the magazine go out of out of out of style or out of business. Or something. But you came out with one last issue called the Beat Bush issue, and this is this one we want to discuss. That is that. Yeah, actually, Andy is also one of the editors yeah. of this journal and this issue. Okay. But it's a journal that my friend Danny Schott and I started mm -hmm. in New Brunswick, New Jersey, in 1982. Yeah, it's great. And it's been coming out since '82. Mm -hmm. And Danny actually had announced that the last issue was going to be the final one. Yeah. But we decided to bring one it back for one more to try to contribute to this important national cause I went of defeating wow. George Bush. Because, it, you know, it's interesting. We were just talking, our, our, our mutual friend, Mikhail Horowitz, a genius mm -hmm. poet that's doing it. He's come out in a partisan way. And also we said uh, Bruce Springsteen, who's always tried to stay away from partisan Attitudes has also come out, yeah. and there's a lot of the uh, poets and people who've tried to sort of stay above the fray in a certain sense are, are weighing in on this one, yeah. but uh, yeah, anyway. The, the extreme nature of this yeah. administration, oh. uh, both uh, President Bush as well as the Republican Congress mm -hmm. and the conservative Supreme Court, have really helped inspire a growing and creative opposition, yeah. and we've tried with this issue to do our part in the literary world to yeah. contribute. Right. A whole lot of people are doing that now. And I hadn't had a chance to introduce you, but this is Elliot Katz on my immediate left. And on my far left is uh, Andy Clawson. And Andy has been involved, I guess, with Longshot and with this issue as well. And they're both poets. And gentlemen, welcome really very, very much to Conversations and to Manhattan Network. Thank you for having uh, us. Maybe you could. Uh, you, you, we sort of led into it already, but why don't you talk a little bit about your own back? You're a poet from long, of long standing. Both of you are. And uh, maybe we could share a little of your background, each of you, and then we could get into talking and showing some of the work. And uh, we also have a clip, a brief clip of a, of a video piece you put together called Dinners, plural, with Andy. Yeah, sort of a play on with, Andre. Yeah, that's my partner, Vivian DeMuth, who, uh -huh. who put that together. Yeah. For Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Yeah. And, and we do have a clip from that. Yeah, good. So I'm a poet, uh, have been writing since the late 70s, was down in New Brunswick, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and uh, working as a printer for nine or 10 years, and then a housing advocate with homeless families mm -hmm. for about 10 years, and then moved to New York six or seven years ago. Uh, I met Andy out at Naropa Institute in Boulder, Colorado, mm -hmm. where I studied with Allen Ginsberg mm -hmm. for a month in 1980. Mm -hmm. So uh, w one thing we have in common is that we were both uh, influenced by Alan and inspired by Alan. Who wasn't, Alan I wonder, influenced by him, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was a tremendous light onto the world, you know. Yeah. And so uh, Denny and I started, Denny Schott and I started Longshot Literary Journal in 1982, actually with the help, from, with, with some help from Alan, who had come down to do a reading at Rutgers in New Brunswick. 
and uh, donated a, a, a nice portion of his reading fee that night to help us start this literary journal. Mm -hmm. So I've been writing since then. I have a few books out. Uh, one yeah. of them is, is here. Let me oh, hold them up for you. I'm, I'm May I? Them. This one first. We show this. It's, this is one of uh, his books. Let's let people know. This, you want to talk about it, please? Uh, this is Unlocking the Exits, uh, which came out in uh, 1999 from Coffee House Press. Uh -huh. Is this, uh, could I read from the back, if you don't uh -huh. mind, from, uh, from Alan? I can read with these glasses on. Uh -huh. It says, another classic New Jersey bard, exclamation point. Elliot E. Katz has created his own original poetics from personal observation, animated discourse, critical insight, fantasy, and communal vision. His verses bespeak the colloquial heart of a, a world tragedy and hope for the haunt, hope from his haunts, New Brunswick, New, uh, USA, Allen Ginsberg. Good tribute, yeah, for this book. So, and so Alan was a, a, a friend and teacher, and uh, I, I do him uh, since 1980, although I'd met him in about 76. While we're at it, let's and, show this okay. one, too. Okay. This is another one, and this is put out by the two of you, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. It, this, this is called Poems for the Nation. Mm -hmm. It was actually, a, it comes out of, of, a, of, a, of a compilation that Allen Ginsberg was putting together in the last 18 months of his life, mm -hmm. where he was asking uh, poet friends around the country if they had any works dealing with the uh, right-wing drift of American politics mm -hmm. at the time. This is the mid-90s mm -hmm. with the Newt Gingrich uh, Republican Congress and uh, Bill Clinton's mo attempts to move the Democratic Party toward the center. Yeah. So this is sort of a poetic response to that. Yeah. And after Alan died, Alan's assistant, Bob Rosenthal, asked Andy and I if we would finish this. And so we're sort of with editors. With you got some, you have some contributions. Baraka, you've got uh, Ferlinghetti, you've got uh, Diane De Palma, you've got uh, mm -hmm. An Andy, you've got Alan Ginsberg, Elliot Catulli, Kupferberg. And uh, these kind of people are part of this uh, this piece, yeah. and so it's good and to let them see what it looks nice like. A few nice pieces about Alan's yeah. in, in influence and inspiration mm -hmm. as a poet activist. The Seven the, Stories Press. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's Stories part of that poetic series. They part put the, out some good stuff. Uh, part of their open pamphlets. Right, open right, right, series. right. Okay, so, and so you've been do so in those veins. I've been, been doing poetry and activism. Yeah. And you have you you have a you you have you have a sort of a political view of things, or you're you're kind of political. You're not talking about the beauty of necessarily of just beauty for beauty's that sake. Kind of political. Hmm? He's political. He's political. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Political. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about you, Annie? Why don't you share a little bit of you know, you've well, been at uh, it for a while. I was born in I was born in Europe, <coughs> uh, Battle of the Bulge, and then um, I came to California, and I lived in Oakland, California. Grew up like uh, other kids of my generation, working class kids, you know, fighting and drinking beer and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And then uh, I went to a lot of colleges, but that didn't work out. I went to, and then I went in the Marine Corps and I got out of there. And then uh, the 60s uh, hit the San Francisco Bay Area, which is where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided I wanted to, uh, I read uh, uh, Gregory Corso, Bob Kaufman, Allen Ginsberg, and decided I wanted to. That was the uh, field of the future. Yeah, yeah. And I want to. And I, wanna, I had. I had a. I had a friend who was uh, into uh, IBM, and he, he was going to go to IBM and learn how to do computers. And I said, Oh man, that's so dumb. I yeah. can add and subtract. What do you need something to help you do that for? You know? I said, Hey, this is what's going. This is going to be as big as baseball. Uh -huh. You know. Uh -huh. right, but I, I was, And then I. Uh, I got married and uh, and uh, I did on the road for. 20 years with the family. Uh-huh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, I went everywhere. Uh -huh. And um, I had about, uh, I'd say maybe about 300 apartments, <laughs> over 200 cars, I think. <laughs> and jobs. Yeah. In 1974, Real I had honest a list of jobs. jobs. I had yeah. over 300 yeah. jobs I had mm. done. Mm. By then, mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, if you count yeah. how many uh, job sites, like uh. when I was doing construction work, mm. holy smokes. Mm. I've had a lot of jobs. I've mm -hmm. worked a lot of times for wages. Good, honest to God, hard work, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm supposed to say, yeah, yeah. yeah. hard uh. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, no, if it wasn't yeah. for people like me, uh, 
Nobody would have any sewers. That's right. Nor houses or anything. Right, or like houses. That. They build it up. Or food. They, yeah, or food or any of the other kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. Like, I still remember one of the, if I may, because we know each other for quite a while, I still remember one of the, he had a van. And you came back from Naropa with Ray Bremsa, God bless him. And I remember you coming into New Paltz and everything. Like you just come back from Naropa. I guess that was a big place, right? Naropa, the, what is it, the disembodied uh, poetics or something, yeah. the school in Boulder? It, it was started as a, as a Buddhist school. Yeah. And then I guess about a year or two after they started, they asked Allen Ginsberg and Ann Waldman to start a, a poetry program there. Yeah. And so it's called the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics. That's it, yeah. So and it was that's, what, that's where Rinpoche, right? Yeah. Trumpa Rinpoche. Trumpa Rinpoche. Trumpa Rinpoche. Yeah, and w while we're at it, let's not lose a track of that because here is one of the publications that is Andy Clausen. All right, let's let him look what it looks like. It's called 40th Century Man. Selected verse, and if you notice, it goes 1996 to 1966. Definitive years. Somebody told me you can't do that. You can't yeah. run it backwards. Uh-huh. But, but I did. You did. And the, reason, that, the yeah. reason I did that was because I didn't really want poems I wrote when I was 22 starting off the book. Uh-huh. And so, but, I, but we had wanted out a chronology, which was going to be the easiest way to do it. Yeah. So I ran it backwards. Mm-hmm. Well, that's okay. You can. It's called Poetic License. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so. right. Uh, <laughs> I, I really didn't need a justification <laughs> for it. <laughs> North but, uh, but, uh, I want to read from the back of the cover, if you don't mind, Andy, and bear with my... Andy Clausen's character voice is heroic, a vox populi of the democratic unconscious, a divine average, thinking, working man persona. As one of the roughs, in quotes, at Whit Whitmit Whitmanic, how do you say it? Whit Whitmanic. Whitmanic. Whitmanic laborer, precisely a union hod carrier, long standing, his bardic populism's grounded on long years, painful, sturdy experience, earning family bread by the sweat of his brow. His comments on the enthusiastic 60s, defensive 70s, unjust. 80s, <laughs> it seems to be, and bullying 90s present a genuine authority in America not voiced much in little magazine print, less in newspapers of record, never in political theatrics through Oval Office airwaves. The expansive bullshit of government TV poetics suffers diminu dim diminution of credibility placed side by side with Mr. Clausen's direct information, and sad, raw insight. Would he were, I'd take my chance on a President Clausen, Allen Ginsberg. No, I'm not, not running. I'm you not want running. to be president? No, You're I'm running, running for president? You and Nader? No, I'm run? not running. And, you know, can we get him on the ticket or no, something? Can I'm we not, get him running? I'm not, I'm not accepting the draft. Yeah, but Allen said you must. You, maybe it's your duty to do that. But I'll tell you what. He did bring up a good point there. Mm. Those 10s and those 20s and 30s and the 40s and the 50s and the 60s mm -hmm, and the 70s mm -hmm. and the 80s and the 90s. They and were unjust and rough times. Getting worse? And, is it getting worse? Yeah, what do you think? Uh, I think this is this, this is, is this surreal. is getting this is getting worse. Yeah. And that is that people here in the United States in years to come may have to look at themselves the same way that the Japanese and the Germans did after World War II oh. and looked at themselves as the rotten guys. Really? And this is going to be and this is this is going to be hard to take because uh no, no matter what bad things the American government has done, the American people basically f feel that they're good people on the uh, on the up and up. On the whole, they are. It's a hell of a good country, people by and large. I think you don't think so? I, no, you don't I, think so? I, I, I think you don't they've think been so, so no. desensitized. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. I think that, like, you know, someone, some, someone mm. gets killed, and if he's not of your ilk, mm. good. Uh, I think that's where they're, they're coming from. You think from. it's that bad? I think it's just things, and I don't know. I don't have... Look at the way they drive. Uh huh. Look at the way they are. Look road, how mean they are. Road rage and all that. Yeah. Well, that's more than road rage. It's mm. road selfishness. It's a, a bl people don't even think. Really? Well, I haven't well, been, been on the road. I haven't been on the road for a long time. Oh well, man, I drive I, all around this place. You know what I'm -E, yeah. L I E, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. There's a lot of people are mean. Yeah. They got those SUVs they, they can go around in? They're yeah, like big yeah. headlights on you, yeah. tailgate you forever, flip yeah. you off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm bigger than you, you are. against the side. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. they ought to this add more initials to the yeah. highways. Yeah, what? like what? they ought to add more initials to the highways. Maybe if they were five or six initials, 
people would think they have more room. Initials? No, you oh, mean, y'all, like B, 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 Oh, 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 oh <laughs> more, I see. More into <laughs> the acronym. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no uh, I, think I, the, think, I think my, my own feeling is that, you know, this, this is a really critical time uh, in American history. I it's, agree with you, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's it's a time it's, when... Unlike the Reagan era, yeah, we, we just went through the Reagan funerals I and, know. and the yeah. uh, and the lauding of a president. I know that um. w where we had such a small, narrow portion of history being presented. Yeah, you know, uh. nothing about you know the the U.S. policies in Central America or yeah. Southern Africa at the yeah, time, know, Reagan's right. policy toward right. AIDS. Yeah. But during the Reagan era, the Congress, we, we had yeah. we had a Congress that was mostly. Uh, dominated by the Democratic Party, you had a little break. and a li and a little more liberal slant on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. What we have now under Bush mm -hmm. is a co congressional, is, is a Congress dominated by Republicans yeah. and, a, and a very conservative Supreme Court. So we're really seeing Full the Bush administration, movie. you know, doing everything they can mm -hmm. to uh, push through a, a wide range of conservative policies, domestic and foreign. Yeah. Uh, th there's a nice essay in the Beat Bush issue of Long Shot. Yeah. Maybe you can find uh, it. Yeah. By, uh, well, I, 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 got a couple. I, I can talk about it. Okay, go, okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, by a guy, it was actually excerpted from a longer article that was in The Nation. Yeah. By a, a writer named William Grider, who's a oh, William Grider, yeah. political writer, Secrets who, who has Campbell. an article entitled Rolling Back the 20th Century. Yeah. And it's a great analysis of the way the Bush administration is trying to gut uh, government social programs and both in terms of economic policy and uh, foreign policy take us back not just before F the Franklin Roosevelt administration but before the Theodore Roosevelt Even administration. Even before Theodore, back to the Gilded so, Age. Right. Huh? Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but I also think that, uh, that, that this extreme aspect, that, that the wide range of extreme policies that the Bush administration is promoting has inspired an incredibly a fast-growing and creative opposition. Yeah, it's like an arrow is pulled back like this. The and tension, the dialectic yeah. tension is really creating a, a mass movement and, around the world. And so, and so we've seen some of the worst instincts mm -hmm. of Americans, but also, also some of the most humanitarian instincts that we have embedded in our history and in our present, you know, really struggling it out. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, you know, I try to be both an optimist and a realist. I know both. it's hard. It's, it's hard. It? It's, it's hard like to walking hold a tightrope. Yeah. Right, right. So I, I know it's going to be a very close election. Uh, you think it up. is? You don't think there's a chance it'll be a blowout? What do you think, Andy? Are you watch? You watching partisan politics? And well, do, do, do I think there's a chance there could be a blowout? Yes, on the incumbent side. Yeah. There's a chance it could, there could be a blowout. He could win by a blowout. You mean Pre you mean the, the Bush could win by a, a landslide? Yes. What because, would it take well, to the reason is uh, uh, how could that happen? H. L. Mencken. No one yeah. ever went broke well, uh, underestimating, underestimating the intelligence, intelligence of the American, American people. people. Yeah. American people have throughout history uh, <laughs> voted against their own interests. Mm. You, uh, you 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 get you get the you know you have the guy co come, coming up to you. Uh, uh, oh man, uh, you work for, you work for the union. Well, well, I don't work for the union. Oh, well, that's great. Uh, uh, how much do you make an hour? I make three fifty. How much do you make an hour? Oh, I make eight. I work for the union. Yeah, yeah but, but I, got, I, got, I don't I have got to pay a, union dues. You're right, and I got the right to work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 You know, they're just they're, uh, it, it, uh, and I don't think it's just endemic to Americans. No, I think, all I think over the world, why, yeah. people uh, uh, vote and go against their own interests. They're fooled by symbiology, by religion, by. Uh, TV, the, uh, well, mass the, well, the TV is of a, consciousness. The, the TV is a, a, a great vehicle to, uh, you know, uh, brainwash. To brainwash. But but I think that, uh, uh, but I think that you know, there's a, really is a, an attitude. I guess it's kind of like an Ayn Rand attitude yeah. in, in America now that, you know, well, why'd you do that? Because I could. Yeah. In right. other words, might is right. Yeah. If I can do it. Then I'm right. Yeah, it's social Darwinism. Right? Yeah, it's getting back you know, to George well, well, Soros. If, 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 if I can buy ads in the newspaper, and then the newspaper does reviews that are favorable, or does news that's favorable, uh -huh. because I I put the the money in there, then that's right because mm. I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And I've got the money, so, so I can do yeah, it, and everything's yeah. market. It's fund it's market fundamentalism is in the saddle now. I think you know. I don't know what's happened to all of the K even. Well, Keynesian I think money. Notions. I think money has really like uh, uh, become personified itself. It's become a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. It actually lives and breathes. Mm -hmm. I think that money is uh, actually, I would say, is bigger than God in the world. <laughs> bigger. Bigger. Yeah. Bigger than God. Bigger yeah. than God. Yeah. Money's bigger than God. Yeah. Yeah. God goes along with money. Yeah, but has. Uh, Hasn't it always been like that, or has it, or is it just getting worse? It's getting more. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. No, I mean, you, read, you read history it. books. Mm. I know. Uh, well, has it always been like in my own lifetime? Yeah, I'd say. No, I'd say no. in my own lifetime mm. that in uh, years past, in the '60s and '70s, even in the '80s, there was a uh, uh, more independent thinking. Yeah. I never has youth been so brainwashed into conforming. Mm. You you look at them on TV. All all their. Um, their non-conformist stuff, mm. it's conformed. Mm -hmm. It's already been, the, the, the octopus has already grabbed it by, by the tentacles and, and spit it out uh, into a commodity. Uh -huh. Yeah, they yeah. turn everything into you a know, commodity. They take uh, yeah. poetry, the greatest, yeah. most sublime poetry, and they turn it into a TV ad, don't they, Jingle? Uh, well, and yeah. Go oh, my, uh, yeah. They, they I mean, got they the spoken the, word guy mm. leaves the microphone after doing the McDonald's ad, yeah. this yeah. and that and this. It's a... Uh, yeah, but, you know, w what you're saying, uh, I agree with in part because that's there. Mm. But on the other hand, you also have two and a half million people signing up for MoveOn.org and trying to really promote a more humane uh, planet. You yeah. have, you have uh, over 10,000 poets sending work to poet, Poets Against the War .org during you had the that. war, showing that, uh, yeah. You had, over, no, you had that over, February 15th thing last yeah, year. There exactly. were millions of people. Mil are, millions it's not only in this country, it's around the, the world. Yeah. You got the Internet, you got things going. You got a reaction to this so, action that is you, a, like have, a dialectical yeah. expansion of you, the you, thesis, you, antithesis, yeah. and there's a chance maybe that yeah. the whole system, if that's called for, is in play in terms of world consciousness, perhaps that we will come yeah. at a synthesis that really is going to uh, get at the problems rather than put another Band-Aid on yeah, an well, inappropriately the, organized planetary the, system. The, the, the poet Maybe I, big change coming. The, the poet Ajay and Rich has a quote that yeah. I use as an epigraph to my introduction for this long shot B. Bush issue. Mm -hmm. It says, a, a patriot is one who wrestles for the soul of her country. Uh -huh. and mm -hmm. I, I love that line. Yeah, you like that. And, yeah, and, I, yeah. and I think that's what we have right now mm -hmm. is we do have a struggle for the soul of our country between you know the uh, the the forces of, of greed and selfishness, and a, a really fast-growing creative response. Group of people. Now, response now, to absurdity. Now, now, Where's now, Beckett? Now the problem is that you know in the short term, I do hope that we're organized well enough to to beat Bush. That's why you put case, out the long yeah. shot. It's yeah. called. Beat Bush issue. Right. Well, and and in, in which case, we have no illusions that Kerry's going to solve all of our problems. We know that some we'll, people we'll still have to speak out against Kerry. We'll still have to protest you know, Kerry's worst policies and continue to organize in the long term mm -hmm. f for real progressive social change, including to get things like instant runoff voting and proportional representation through that would help us, uh, that, that would help make third and fourth party campaigns more viable in the future. I see. That's but, it. You, you, but, you put, you put stock in that. Okay, that's worth talking about. Nader and so forth. But, but, well, mm -hmm. uh, well, to use a dirty word. We talk about that. I'm not supportive of Nader's campaign this year, but I, yeah. I, I did vote for him in previous years. Mm -hmm. But to me, you know, the third or fourth party movement is, a, is an experiment, and yeah. we, ha we have to learn from it. Mm -hmm. And to me, the idea is we need to have structural changes in, in the electoral process to make those campaigns viable. Uh -huh. And until then, our, our movements need to you know, concentrate on, uh, on, on, on issues, on places where we can be effective, mm -hmm. but also on, in, in the short term. We need to have, basically, I think we need to have short and long-term visions mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah, Andy was but, saying, oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, yeah. no, I, no, but yeah. I, I was just saying that I do think, I, I do think in the short term that I hope we're organized well enough to beat Bush. Mm. In the long term, I think the problem is with all this, uh, this organizing we were talking about, move mm. on, poets mm. against the war dot org, uh, America coming together, yeah, right. uh, all these groups. Mm. I do think the problem is we're not organized well enough to really um, affect national 
political policies wow. right now because that our policy influence doesn't measure up to our numbers right mm -hmm. now. Basically, that the whole is less than the sum of our parts, uh -huh. and that we need to think about ways of organizing and coming together, mm. uh, creating new networks, new coalitions to, to give us more influence. Yeah, to get and, and to get a context where these things can be. There was an interesting piece in the New York Times a couple of weeks ago where they said the move on and so forth is getting to be, it's, it's like going to, in a certain sense, transcend even the political party system that's been the way in which we looked at these things. And Andy was talking earlier, he's saying you need to have some place where ideas and visions yeah. and so forth can actually be thinking about something other than necessarily only the lesser of two yeah. evils, which Thule Kupferberg and Ed Saunders have been telling us we've had to select, and, and, and Lenny Brenner and so forth, we've always had to select the lesser of two evils that the paradigm was yeah. not appropriate, and maybe there's a new one coming. Although, maybe, for, although, uh, for, although for this one, I've been quoting Abby Hoffman a lot. Uh, well, well, which part I, of Abby? Abby? Abby Hoffman in 1988 mm. uh, d during the election was mm. saying, sometimes it really is better to have the lesser of two evils <laughs> yes, than the evil maybe, of two maybe. lessers. Yes, oh, the evil of two better lessers. To have the lesser oh. of, sometimes yeah. it's better to have the lesser of two evils and the evil of two lessons. Now that's a haiku. And I you think see, now that's a sound that will fit into television. And I think, right? Yeah. yeah, right. And I, and I God think, bless and I think that's true for this mm. coming election. And then we're going to have to um, yeah. work on trying to yeah, uh, I think make, like, carry the Kerry administration as progressive as possible. Put their feet to the fire and, because he's yeah. saying he's going to put more troops in. And I remember, if I could, I remember back to, remember, let's back to Abby. Abby went there in 68. Wait a second, kind of, just because he's, go saying he's going to put more troops yeah, in. Yeah, okay, talk. Doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to put more troops in. Okay, talk to him. The guy is just doing the guy is doing what his people are telling him to try and get elected. Yeah. And that's it. Uh -huh. I don't think that any of them what they say is necessarily going to be their policy. It's all a big PR campaign. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, right. That's oh. what I think it's kind of obvious. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why they say the waffling, "Hey, but don't talk about pigs in Iowa or something, mm. you know? No. Don't talk about weed in New York. Don't talk about welfare in Massachusetts mm. or whatever. Gay marriage is not down in Arizona. Whatever, you mm -hmm. know? And, you know, and go back and forth. How can we say this without offending anybody? Mm -hmm. How can we get out of this situation without mm. answering this question? Mm. And I think, and I think uh, that, that's, that's what's going on. I, I don't think that, uh, it, you know, the media is, is controlled by the people with the money down to about five ownership patterns now, I think. Yeah, the major you got media. this clear yeah. channel, you got all this other yeah. stuff. Yeah. You, 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 anytime any, uh, like, a, a singer comes out and says anything, Tracy Chapman, whoever. They'll take them off the air. Yeah, they're, well, they're gone. You know, mm. they're not, yeah. That's well, it. they did, yeah. They did that. Uh, Dixie I, Chicks, they took yeah, off, didn't Steve they? Steve yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know, they're mm. not going to play, they're not gonna I, play I, I, anymore. On the other hand, their concerts continue to be sold out. They do? The CDs kept selling. Well, maybe they just let us yeah. have our little thing over here because, you know, as well, long as you're not on the main line, you're not going to be able to have I, a... Uh, Right. An influence. You can have your thing out in the meadow. Yeah. Have a nice yeah. time. Have, yeah. Yeah. You know. Except this time, they don't want to give us the meadow <laughs> they in don't Central even, Park. In Central Park, they won't. Yeah. You think they will, they'll do that for the Republican I, I think convention? The, I think the Seems United to for me Peace and Justice is, some, is going to win their court case. You think they will? That I would think, be a big case. I think case. they're going to win because... They said we can't go there. No, but we would trample the grass. Yeah. I just sent a letter to the... Odd. New, I sent a letter to the New York Times yesterday. Did you? to the editor. And... I, I, it was a little poem, and I said, uh, read this issue. Mm -hmm. I said, let me see if I can remember it. Mm -hmm. and anyone who has read Walt Whitman or William Blake yes. knows, that, th knows that the manicured lawn loves the step of caring human feet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but how many people have read Whitman yeah. or that or, or, you know, that? But, and, and yeah. I, I, so the, the grass to me is, a, is really a non-issue. Saw a thing on TV you this morning. You should say that. Mm. The grass is a non-issue. The, the oh, no, I'm saying not, not as a non-issue in, in the universal term. I'm saying is a non-issue in terms of why the mayor is really trying to prevent the oh, rally. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he was talking as a tree hugger. Yeah. You know, I mean, as he's a, an ecology lover. Uh, uh, as I a, what, I like grass. I know, yeah, yeah, me, I know, me too. I know, I know, yeah. But you're <laughs> a tree hugger, and that's okay. I mean, you know, we need all kinds and everything like that, and that's cool. And he made that point and everything. But I don't know. But I wonder, going back, I, I can remember back. You can remember. Remember back to 68 and that Vietnam? And that damn thing was growing. There was pretty strong alienation along about then, wasn't there? You think it's more intense now or is it different than Vietnam? Do you think, uh, remember 65, you're just building up to Vietnam. We ended up with 500,000 troops, 58,000 dead, and 3 to 4 million Southeast Asians killed for, as Mr. McNamara said, a mistake. 
Do you think there's a danger that the thing in Iraq could lead to something like they keep saying we have to save our honor and so forth, and it was the administration, Democrat and Republican, that it, there's a danger of something getting out of hand like Iraq with this incredible war on terror that the administration yeah. so is like. What do you think? So what do you have? No, it hasn't happened that much. We've oh no! What? How are they going to get out of there? I don't know. That's well, what I'm saying. Okay. No, I'm asking you. That's a large issue that goes out oh, in you know, oh, five, yeah, six no. years. It, it, you know, now there's a base there. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got uh, that country Iran uh, box yeah. from, from two sides. Mm -hmm. If they want to, um, they're they're. they're uh, no, this is this is this is awful. This war, this war, this war, this war on terror. This war on terror. It's going to last a hundred years. Oh come on, a hundred years? You think we got a hundred years? You think we got a hundred years I, under the current yeah. situation? I think. My, my what you think that, that all the water is going to be fouled, or somebody's going to blow the whole thing up? I don't know. I'm, I, 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 it, it could happen. Me. It occurs to me because yeah, if, if we, we do have if we blow years. it all up, now we're getting to the point where we can blow up and destroy the whole yeah. bloody species. Yeah. The, uh, the the technology. They don't want to do that. The, the weapons technology. Uh, no, they want to. No, they, I don't think they, they want to have power. They want to mm. see people squirm. They want full spectrum dominance. Yeah, that's right. Of the whole yeah. ball of wax. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what they say. Yeah. yeah. Full yeah. spectrum dominance. Okay. My my own feeling is about to bring peace uh, yeah. to the world. I'm sorry. With, with Iraq and Vietnam, I think you know, his we 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 need to try to learn the historical lessons. Thank you. Bring us and, to earth. Yeah. And. Uh, and I think the Bush administration has learned all the wrong lessons from Vietnam. You know, mm -hmm. what they tried to take out of the Vietnam lesson is that, you know, they want to make it possible to win, to uh, to, yeah, to to go back and fight these. Yeah, if war, we had put a few more troops other, in, we could have pulled countries. it out. Yeah, and won. But, but we think, lost. But I think sometimes when we try to make you know too many one-to-one -one comparisons, yeah, right. we we lose sight of uh, of the distinctions, and I think. You know what's happening in Iraq mm -hmm. now. What happened? What's happened in the last couple of years mm -hmm. is is a new is in many ways a new thing, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's a situation we have to deal with with what's with, with what's Still happening empire. now. And you know what's you know among the things that are happening is it's been a disaster in terms of uh, the number of Iraqi civilians and uh, draftee military draftees who were killed. The number of U.S. soldiers. Who were killed in terms of Iraqi civilians? I've seen numbers between ten thousand and thirty-seven thousand. Remember, plus, plus there was a couple you know, million. There, there were called. between right. three, were three and four right. million Southeast Asians killed right. with napalm, free fire right. zones killed right. for what Mr. McNamara right. said was a mistake, right. and nobody went in the dock for right. that. Th that's why I don't want to make these one-to-one -one comparisons right. because okay. I don't want to oh. say that that's ten thousand or thirty-seven thousand. Is the same as three and a half million, mm -hmm. but it's still. You yeah, know, I know. These, I know. These are real yeah. people. Yeah, this is. We're and, in deep doo-doo. And, and, and yeah. the other thing that. The, but that's dangerous for a gorilla uh, to yeah. be in deep doo-doo. And, and the other thing that doesn't get spoken about very much, which is a real danger, in Iraq, is the depleted uranium uh, weapons that were used, it's, which will cause cancers and. It's and doing it as we speak. For for years to come. And Agent Orange enough. is still in Vietnam. Right. Yeah, there's people still suffering from right. that. Yeah, but yeah. going back to yeah, the, go going back to the yeah. Kerry discussion yeah. we had. All right. Yeah. One right. of the things that that I think the Kerry team is making a mistake on is, mm -hmm. right now the electoral, uh, the electorate in this country is so polarized mm -hmm. that we have a, a much smaller, a much more narrow number of undecided voters yeah. than I think we've had in any election. Yeah. You know, in recent years. Yeah. I think they're they're trying to. Talk deal with the, getting four or five percent only of I these think, yeah. undecided voters. Yeah. And I think the Kerry team is making a mistake in thinking that these are people in the, who are politically right in the middle and they have to really keep their policies right down the center to, to win these votes. Whereas I think these are p people who, for the most part, you can't make a rule about all of them, mm -hmm. but these are mostly people who aren't going to really make their final decision based on a po um, political ideology. What are they going to base it I on? I think then? it's going to be more on uh, on questions of personality, character, those kinds of things. And I think there are people who uh, who who see that there are problems with the Bush administration that he he's he he's, may not be the most competent president we've had that he seems to have uh, that, that he seems to have lost the worldwide sympathy America had after the atrocity of 911 that there are real problems with the Bush administration and so they're not committed to voting for Bush 
but th that they don't see Kerry as somebody who has consistent principles to stand up on, that he's been well-defined by the Karl Rove folks as a flip-flopper. Mm -hmm. And I think Kerry wow. would be much better at coming up with consistent principles mm -hmm. and focusing on them rather than always trying to come up with positions exactly in the middle. But you so tend I to be... That'll, yeah. I hope that I hope somebody in his team will tell him to start being a little more bold and a little more progressive in some areas, whether it's health care, affordable housing, mm. education, to come up with some real substantive policies. Oh. Yeah, and I think he does have to have a plan. Yeah. For what do you think, Andy, on that? You think he's got the right strategy in terms of uh, not coming out more boldly with the vision? No, thing? I think I think he has, I think he has the wrong strategy. I think that uh, I do think that Americans admire. Uh, 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 people who uh, stick to their guns, uh, who are assertive, who, who, who believe in what they're saying, who, 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 who at least give off the aura mm -hmm. that they believe in what they're saying. I think that uh, I agree with Elliot uh, about, about uh, that they're making a mistake by going to the middle that way. I think that the, that the whole election, that the media is just framing it in an absurd thing. Yeah. Who cares what Kerry did in Vietnam? Mm -hmm. That yeah. was 30, 35 years ago. What does that have to do with running the country now? Do you care what Bush did in 30, 70? No. Five? You don't care about no, that? No, no, no. What I care about, what I care about Bush is that they just, they just uh, did some more uh, uh, deregulated uh, the truck industry yeah. again. So, so, we can have, uh, so we can have more uh, uh, unsafe big rigs going down the road, mm. chewing up the road. Mm. Uh, that uh, all the the ecology regulations, you know now, uh, yeah. So we, we, the lumber companies can go in and pollute, take those trees, do this, do that for dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, I care. Or the fact that they uh, invaded this country for no reason. Yeah, they invade. We invaded Kuwait because uh, I mean uh, because Iraq had invaded Kuwait because they invaded another country. Now we've invaded another country with no reason. Oh. And it doesn't seem to work that way if you're yeah, an 800 yeah, pounds. Yeah, I don't care if he went to his mm. National Guard. If he didn't go to his National Guard, means more power to him. Yeah, but it's your, you're measuring it on this personal content where people put these little idiosyncratic uh, stories yeah, together they, they, and politics are based I know, on but that, that's, right? not what, that's not what it should be about. It's it should popular. Be about what, is, what are you really going to do about uh, you know, health care in this country? What are you, and also, like, how are, are they going to treat this thing? Terror, how are we going to have freedom? And we're going to stop the terrorists too. Well, how, how how is that really going to be implemented? You know, yeah. like a, a cohesive policy, and uh, and and uh, if something that would uh, honor uh, civil liberties, uh, right, And still protect us. If we're if we're if we're going to fight, it's it's like they told us in the Marine Corps: you love democracy, then you don't have any of it. Mm -hmm. You don't have any. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's like it's like uh, oh, you, uh, so we can have free speech. We can't have it. Yeah, that's right. I know what you mean. That's a universal code uh, of military justice. There ain't none. And it's becoming, you just do what you're told, young man. Yeah. That's all it's called fascism, right? I mean, it is. It's a fascist model, it's, right? It's yeah. become, were you were you Semper Fi? Were you into yeah. the spirit of it, or you? Well, what were, in the Marine Corps? Yeah. Were you? Well, did you volunteer? Of course. And you uh, yeah, of course. After, you changed after, your tune. Well, when, I, when I when we I graduated young from and, boot camp, mm, yeah, a tear mm, was in my eye. Yeah. From the halls of Montezuma. Yeah, singing that and everything. Well, I went through the thing, you know, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, so know, people when, can't I, when I when I look back at it and mm. see where what it made of me and where it was taking me, you know, mm -hmm. it's pretty awful. But yeah. uh, it was better to get off into poetry, really, than to become a professional soldier. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that, that is a, <laughs> kind of a big change. We could talk about that uh, life uh, experience, yeah. but we haven't got time enough to go through all of that. Well, in one one, one hour thing program. that Andy said that I think mm. is really important is the role of the media. Yeah. Oh, absolutely and, crucial. And, yeah. You know, a, a re reforming the media in this country is such an important issue to get any of the, our other issues yeah. out there. The way the media has allowed itself to focus so much on this question of Kerry's Vietnam record, uh -huh. or what, what happened on, you know, a couple of what particular days, yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. And, you know, I, you, we, can, we can blame Carr Rove or we mm. can blame the Kerry team for not doing a better job at focusing on the real Rupert issues, Murdoch. But, but we really have to also look at the media. You know, one, yeah, of, the, absolutely. one of the hopes, mm -hmm. you know, I have for the upcoming years is, is, is the movement that's taking place to reform the media. You know, oh. all, all that work that went into trying to oppose 
the media consolidation mm -hmm. uh, that the FCC was That was a real response. That's so still very, very re like, resonant. Yeah. That resonates in the society. Groups yeah. like Media Channel mm -hmm. on, on the Internet, Democracy That's Danny Now Schechter, on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, you know, uh, Amy, group, yeah. these public access stations like MNN yeah, are well, so important. Now. Yeah, well, we're sort of marginalized in, from the mainline you know, media, but it is there. And that they went along with the, the whole thing about the bait and switch kind of thing that went on with the... Uh, with the, you know, and say, and they had a very interesting thing on television today. I think it was Joe Friendly saying they had a thing where they said the people, and it, they rate it because some of them are more conservative than others and everything. Yeah. But they all went along yeah. with the with the Strum and Dragon and the war, immediate danger, yeah. all of which was not true. And seventy percent of the people think he had to do with 9/11 and so forth mm -hmm. and all these yeah, things. Just, and it can even be traced. The new and the now more informed that. you are, yeah. the more informed you are in terms of reading and things of that sort of thing the less you do believe the myths right. that give support to them, which right. is kind of disquieted in a way. So the more informed you become, the le more you're marginalized politically according to the way yeah. the demographics of the country are, which is back to Mr. Mencken, maybe? I don't know. Well, yeah, we have, we have to, you know, we're, we're in such a sad place that really, you, you know, what, what I would like to see is like, you know, and I think it will happen, but probably too late, like in Germany, that some of the wealthy people, a lot of the wealthy people say this has gone too far. When did they get around to saying that? In Germany? Yeah. I think in the 34, 35, there were, there were, there were the wealthy people who tried to pull out, you know, and say, wait, this has gone too far. You mean far. they split the scene? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know, because they, uh, you know, they blew up the Reichstag, and, they, you know, I mean, I was just wondering. Yeah, it's gone. When, it's, when did the uh, patricians get together to uh, stand off this... Uh, Fascist oh, a little, little bit too late. It, a it, little it, bit it, too late. It, it yeah, was, it was yeah. quite too late. Yeah, and the rules. And, and, you know, I, it, there were people in '33 and '34 that you know knew that it, that, it, that it was going too far, but they, but they, you know, eventually they went along with it and shut up because mm -hmm. it was nothing they could do about yeah. it. But yeah, it, but that's going on now. I mean, yeah, yeah I think it's going on now. And look at the people all go along with this thing. It's surreal. Where's Beckett? Where is <laughs> Beckett? To, you know, it's surreal the world now and people are going along with it and they do because they got their identities right for whatever reason people go along with that kind of a drift i mean it's really yeah. crucial and, and the media plays a big role yeah with, the media fox yeah. news i think has really taken even even the more mainstream uh, media a little bit to the right like see i think it's helped cnn shift a little bit to the right for, i always say fo would, I, I always i always say fox news mm -hmm. Is to news what professional wrestling is to wrestling. Well, okay, you know, or inquire, it, it, or tabloid. It, it, yeah. it's, it's hard to compete. But it's getting all it's hard tabloid. For real news to it's getting with all it. tabloid yeah. now. Even the news yeah. channel. And the news channel. There's Wolf Blitzer and all singing the praise. Uh, Broca. All these people are over there saying, yeah, yeah let's go get them and everything. Yeah, they yeah. all went along they, with they it. There was no yeah. hard questioning. No. There was no insisting no. upon, is this fact, this and that. They were all accepting. They all got led around. Yeah. I mean, only yeah. Feingold, I think, voted, he, he, not Feingold. The guy up in Minnesota voted no. against the uh, war powers thing. And, and, if you, and if you listen to uh, Chris Matthews mm -hmm. on Harbaugh now, he, he's saying that, well, everybody thought there were WMDs in yeah. there. Yeah, now what's the that French, about? The French, the Russians. But what, he's, but, but what he's conveniently ignoring is the fact that the inspections were going on yes. when the war started. Yes. And the inspectors were not finding it. That's right. And That's they, right. And then you had people like Scott Ritter, mm -hmm. who was God actually yeah. who was actually an inspector in there, yeah. who were saying we don't know. Okay, where we does it go know. when so, you've got that so, kind so, of? So it's, it's hard, yeah. you know. It, it really a lot. So where is of, it in a nation depends. where you've got that kind of information there and it doesn't get out? Yeah. A lot. Of I mean, what just, does that say about democracy yeah. and that, and what that the says, people can be led around like sheep? Was it, what it says? And I preventive think, yeah. now, preventive, preventive war and attacking other countries with. Bunker busting nuclear tactical yeah. nuclear weapons for full spectrum dominance, and it's rolling like a juggernaut, and there's no real opposition yeah. to it. Yeah. But maybe there is some well, real well, opposition well, in my developing. Mind, in, in my mind, a lot of this, what the media, what's going to happen to the media, what's going to happen to national policy, really depends on the strength of progressive movements, mm -hmm. and we haven't been strong enough. They the haven't. The unions are in disarray, well are they enough. not? You've been a union man for a long time. Ever since PAPCO, Reagan pretty much broke the back of that. Oh, uh, the to union me. started it, it, when, uh, in, uh, what was it, 1947 when that deal went down. 47? Oh, yeah, they told the mafia, like, you can come in, get rid of the, uh, the, 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 the socialists. Yeah. yeah, get rid of the socialist communist mm -hmm. Jews, get mm -hmm. them out of there, get yeah. them out of the union. No, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 uh, but, uh, um, but the unions, unions, you know, have tried to maintain, uh, 
you know, something. Mm -hmm. Some of them have, but uh, it, beca it, it became a, a club for, a, a, at least in the labor, in the construction industry, for aristocratic labor, really. Uh -huh. Like, you know, it was tick-tock, the game is locked, it was hard mm -hmm. to get into the mm -hmm. union, organizing stopped, mm -hmm. the paybacks to the boss, mm -hmm. uh, uh, damn the ecology movement, uh, we want to build that dam, mm -hmm. we, it'll be jobs. Co uh, uh, yeah, and then and then oh, uh, half the guys can be non-union on the job. Mm -hmm. They started all this, uh, all all this stuff. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that that there has to be, and I don't know how this is going to happen, a spiritual awakening. And I don't mean a religion. No, uh -huh. no, th no that's going to no, come. Yeah. No, but I think somehow uh, there has to be an awakening to to the uh, sen the sensibilities, the, the sense of fair play. In human beings, uh, common sense. This has to be awakened somehow. Mm -hmm. And how it's going to happen? I do think that uh, political organization and education is tremendously important. But I think that there's something else going to happen. I I don't know. You know, like a, it, maybe maybe there's some kind of thing that's better than LSD mm. or something. You know, oh. something that somehow uh, or some incident happens mm -hmm. that, that people somewhat incident oh incident some yeah. some something happens mm -hmm. outer space people come or something and tell mm -hmm. us to cut it out yeah well because we as human beings as i look at it you know yeah, we're heading we're, for the abyss. we've improved a little bit mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. people don't drag women by their hair into the cave too mm -hmm. much anymore mm -hmm. we've improved some over uh, 200,000 years yeah, yeah but uh when you really think about it Look at how many wars, how many crazy killings. Look, look, you look at a map. Oh, over there they got this going on. Over there they got this going on. Mm. Oh, there. Oh, it's terrible here. It's terrible there. There's very few places you can point out. It's where terrible everywhere. It's all a few to own everything everywhere. It's plutocratic people, and they make their you know get together at the country club, and it's a real mess. And but one of the things, if I may, Ali, you bring up is that the absurdity. Maybe you you've just studied dialectics, right? You've got to understand Marx and Hegel and that. But you know. You you have a thesis and an antithesis, and they get to be all spread out, and then finally there's a synthesis. Maybe there's been this and, thesis and you, and you presented by this band, together, and you hope things come together in a more progressive way. And the antithesis is in the broad in the broad reaction. We have to keep in mind the world is really in opposition to what the policy of the United States is. People who are not informed think that the world is with us, but the people of the world are not. There's a few plutocratic people. Uh, coalition of the unwilling or something like that they are but the world is really again there may be hope in a antithesis to this th thesis that the united states is presenting now for this full spectrum dominance thing that uh will be something that will lead to a real synthesis or something moving over to a place where these spiritual things or these comprehensive vision thing that mr bush used to talk about I, yeah. could be at least discussed and gotten out into some you know, if it gets out into the into the body, there's w w internet. There's way of distributing. If you get good idea, really good ideas that really make sense, you got to move on. Those people are keep going. Maybe it will be the birth of that which will transform the earth and make it the liberated yeah. place that it has the I full know. potentiality. Not as long as being. people turn on the TV for their news. Well, I know, but we're trying to talk past just that. Now, what do you think? Yeah. You talk to I, that because you're you got to you try to keep that optimism I, I, side I try, going. I try to be optimistic enough mm -hmm. to think at least that there is hope. Yeah. For, for making this a better world, uh -huh. that that the future is undecided, mm -hmm. it, things could get a lot worse, and mm -hmm. certainly, you know, we're in danger of of permanent environmental crises in the next fifty or hundred years if if things uh, if the, the policies in, in that area don't change. Mm -hmm. But I like to be optimistic enough to think that there's hope that the future is undecided, that it depends on human actions from here on, mm -hmm. and that there are enough people with a, a consciousness about things that we can do to improve the planet mm -hmm. and enough uh, I ideas on how to organize that there's at least a possibility if we work well and we work hard and uh, uh, that, sort of that, like that we can turn things around. Is now, sort of, now, oh, now, I also sort of like think, Horatio Alger? Kind of? Well, I, no. you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I hope it's yeah. more practical oh, than okay, that. Okay, but, okay. But, okay. I do, but I also think, you know, those kinds of dreams mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I mean, it's in the human soul matter. somewhere. And that's oh. one of the places that art comes in. That yeah. art, art can be used and poetry can be used to really look at, to really explore oh. the reality, to really mm. look at what's there. Uh -huh. But I also, I love this concept from uh, philosopher Erstblock. Yeah. Who, uh, it comes yeah. out of the, the kind of uh, democratic left tradition. Yeah. Uh -huh. And 
Uh, he had a phrase that I love and I always use called yeah. anticipatory illuminations. Uh, anticip anticipatory all right, Bucky Fuller had one anticipatory design science he okay. had also too. We so could set up better parameters. May come out of that. Anticipatory so, is a good so, word. So yeah. the idea is that in the artistic or the poetic imagination, mm -hmm. you can come up with imagery and language that describes things that don't yet exist yeah. in the actual world. Yeah, yeah, you're dealing with a you know, broader like, reality. Yeah. There are re there are, most of the reality is totally invisible. Yeah. The electronic spectrum is invisible. Right. The chemical world, the all these kind of things like, are invisible. Like Allen Ginsberg's image yeah. of the hydrogen jukebox. Yeah, all right. Where yeah. you know, there are so many different ways you can look at it. One yeah. way would be that yeah. we're going to apply that technological inventiveness yeah. toward music instead yeah. of toward... Yeah, killing. Instead of toward... Or right, toward uh, if toward I may, Bucky Fuller, you say toward killing re rather than... I mean, living re rather than right. killing re. Right. And good anticipatory design with good design might be part of the ecological problem of doing right. more with less but and I, being able but to I, make but things I think work. That, I think that it, it takes a combination mm -hmm. of hard work and organizing mm -hmm. and spiritual and artistic creative illumination and fantasy and dream. Uh -huh. I think it takes that combination of mm -hmm. on, on, we need to be on the ground and yeah. Yeah, the vision thing has dream. to be related back through to practical reality, right? You can't have a thing where a lot of people into consciousness that sort of thing don't want to have anything to do, let's say, with uh, economics, because that's so mundane. If you want to be with economics, they don't want to hear about consciousness or tr anything meta to the reality yeah. they have control over. Oh, well, yeah, Those ask them for some to, money and then... Uh, yeah, money, money, money. Well, money. Ask, them, money ask them for yeah. some money and then yeah. they'll yeah. talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, the paternal, but, that, but there's going to have to be a coming he, together. I don't think each those. person needs to be expert on all those or contribute mm, on all no, those, okay. but we are okay. going to need... Yeah, but collectively, we are going to need some ideas for a more fair economic system, uh, oh, as, yeah. as well as yeah. you know, art to to both look at the world and to help give because us it, joy and vision. Yeah, right. Vision thing. We if people could die for the want of the vision thing. I think no. You think it can be really. Uh, you know, Mr. B Mr. Bush Sr., you know, 41, said uh, he didn't understand the vision yeah. thing. But the vision thing, well, do we have well, people out there that have that the vision from, thing? That quote from it's going to come from the poets or something. It's not going to come from the politicians or the business people. It's going to come from the intellectual community. Should, should we read a couple poems? Uh, well, we can, and we've got a piece. Do you want to try and show from Andy's thing, or do you want to just keep talking and show? You want to show the piece? We've got a piece from Dinners with Andy. You want to maybe, maybe we can do that. Maybe if you could can set that up. we got about, it's just poems. one minute. We've only got minute, about seven right? minutes, six minutes left. This, this, was a, this was a film that my partner Vivian DeMuth yeah, here. did for MNN okay. called Dinners with Andy. Well, instead of Dinners with Andre. Huh? Well, yeah, Dinner there, with Andre. There was a My Dinner with Andre. There yeah. was a My Dinner with Abby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's, okay, there's well, a little humorous playfulness okay. within the piece. Okay. Well, we only got about five minutes left. This is about a minute. Okay. So why don't we set that up and run that? Then we're talking with Andy uh, uh, Clausen and Elliot Katz. Let's set up and run that uh, little piece now, about a minute long. Uh, Dinners with Andy. Thank you. The Bush administration has certainly used 911 in a cynical way to push conservative programs that we know they would have wanted to push with or without. Okay. Well, taking freedoms away is, uh, you know, they mean. To, to take it. Well, it was really funny. I saw uh, Bush uh, talking on TV to the Democracy Association, and he's going to spread democracy around the world. And they had a split screen. And on the split screen, what were they showing all the time? Somebody weighing out grain, exchanging money. We're going to spread democracy. And what they meant is, we can do business. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get this stuff for 32 cents a bushel, man. Come back here and sell it for $5 a bushel. We're making the world safe for Halliburton. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, uh, it, was, it, 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 it really surprised me because there was a real equation there. I guess they, they, they're going to do it all the way. Christianity, democracy, a uh, healthy dollar. You never say no. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I thank God for humor. That's funny. You got it down. Now. You're getting the pattern. You're getting. We're really good at recognizing patterns. The Homo sapien is. We can recognize patterns like a Surat painting. You know that kind of thing. We can see these patterns. Maybe the patterns are getting to where we can see. Maybe people will be able to see. Like we draw away. Maybe the technology is coming so fast. We'll be able to see patterns better. More people like you see the whole painting rather than get all caught up in the co-opted little dots, concentrating on specialization. 
or something? Oh, Maybe yeah, that's so part of the whole thing. Yeah, no, not the swami. I'm, we'll just, we'll I'm just reaching for yeah. something on yeah. the yeah. Right. Causal, right. causal association yeah. and free association. Yeah, right? right, or something. Yeah, but it yeah. might be we're coming to some sort of a, yeah. a situation. So you're trying to keep hope alive. How about you, Andy? You got hope alive, or what do you think? Well, I think when people start hoping, usually the odds are really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that hope and faith are really overrated things. They're, they're overrated. have been over the centuries and millennia. I, guess. I think I'm, people have faith because they don't know. Yeah. If you know, you, you don't have to believe. Uh -huh. You just know. Uh-huh. And, uh, and hope, usually the odds are over 50 to 1 when you start hoping. Yeah. Uh. I think that, uh, uh, but love. Mm, love is eternal, I think, yeah. yeah love is no, a good, love, that's a hell of a good place to start. Isn't the love it? is powerful. Yeah, love is something more than the sum of the parts, I think, you know. Yeah, okay, yeah. I agree. Yeah, that's true. That's a good beginning point, I think. Well, hey, Elliot wants to read, right? Did you're you going to read? Super you're going to read? Or or have no. a, you only got time for a haiku. You have no time for a long, a, okay, well, a long. We can, we can just. Do you have something uh, haiku? You want to do something haiku or something? No, I have. Yeah. Hmm. You know, because it, because you see, this is television, and uh, so you've only got time for a uh, haiku. Could I read a haiku of sure. yours? Maybe I could just pick one. I wonder if I could. I'm not pick sure one. if it's a haiku, yeah. but well, a it's not a, a haiku. A short but poem. Here's one quick poem we could do. We could just about get it in. What the woman in the passenger seat said. My mother brought me up to believe you were a punk if you used a weapon instead of tearing someone apart with your bare hands. Now there, that really takes up a lot of good thought, you know. That's, That's really a, interesting. Yeah. See, there's only time for um, one more. One more haiku by Katz. Oklahoma City. That's a good I wonder where a Gulf War vet might get the ridiculous idea <laughs> that you can solve all your problems with bombs. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, do, uh, but uh, uh, the, 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 that those are good. That's funny. That's let me really let me funny. do That's one. really funny. Thank God for funny. Yeah, yeah. Co on the Columbia shuttle catastrophe. Yes. Thirty thousand people starved to death every day. Hmm. But they don't do it live on national TV. No, they don't. No, it isn't. Yeah. Well, listen, you know, I don't know. There's so many things we could talk about. Elliot, I take my hat off to you, Keeping Hope Alive, and you and Dan Schott and Andy and the rest of the people and, and that the, contributed to Lee. And Nancy Mercado, who's the fourth editor on this issue. Fourth editor on this particular issue, and it's one that is for Hollywood. And we've got to put up a place where they can get, there's a, a website for do, Longshot, right? Yes, www.longshot.org. Right, okay. So a, a combination of about, uh, uh, there's 118 contributors in uh -huh. here. 118 uh, we, good contributors, with, with a, visionary contributors. Uh, a, a mix of yeah. diverse styles, yeah. uh, poetry, artwork, and articles, yeah. some focusing directly on the Bush administration and its policies, mm -hmm. and others focusing either uh, directly or indirectly on a full range of issues okay. that we hope could be more effectively addressed by a better president now and the, yeah, the all right. Okay, we be, have to be running the credits now and everything. We'll put that at the end of the credits that say, you know, the address where they can go, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the website for Long Shot. And we also got the books that you've published. You got a, this is just scratching the surface. And uh, we got into a lot. We could go on talking for about 27 hours without any problem. We should have more venues where there can be discussion of things like Andy said, spiritual, Love, uh, big comprehensive kind of context, and I guess this uh, oh. poetry fest you're involved in it's, now. It's, it's one. It's one of the nice things about actually the growth of these poetry spaces.